you might know what you would have from one of the daughter seniors. Yeah. Um, basically, the mom was told she probably won't make it to Christmas. The cancer. There's eight kids, right, Mike? Seven. Yeah. All right. But um, if dad's not around, bottom line, so if we can help him with anything, so I mean, our goal is a thousand. We're going to be close to it with all the donations. If we don't have it, we're going to put it in. So no bull with me and Andrew. So we'll, we'll make sure we get a thousand. Uh, so thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. We're going to do a quick slideshow. And actually, I was doing this about two weeks ago. And I had 12 slides, and two days later, I had 14 slides and 16. I think I have like 30. So we're going to fly through them. I'll try not to keep you longer than an hour. So just listen up. Take notes if you want. Anybody know I need a chocolate? Besides, I love chocolate. Job security. Job security. Well, I get you guys back. I gotta keep coming. Oh, uh, baby, but no. Chocolate does a lot, and actually, this isn't real chocolate. This is fake sugar bullshit, but it is. Cocoa is its base, so it is chocolate. Even just you thinking about eating the chocolate, guess what happens in your mouth? You start to salivate, and your brain starts re releasing different hormones without even eating it. What, what kind of hormones do you think? Endorphin, serotonin, so you start feeling good. Believe it or not, I just look up stupid facts, but you have to eat about 45 pounds of it to get it. But anybody know what THC is? Marijuana? You, if you eat for about 45 pounds of chocolate, they hit the same receptor. So that's why when you eat chocolate, you feel good, relax. It's almost like they call it the love drug, right? When you eat chocolate, you almost feel like you're falling in love. I'm not promoting pop, I'm just saying. If you eat lots of chocolate, you feel kind of stoned. Just saying. But do me a favor, I really want you to eat it now. I actually want you to eat it. Don't tell me you're on the diet, just eat the damn thing. It's not a lot of calories. And you gotta be careful. So make sure you eat it. So again, yeah, thanks for coming in. Can you hit the lights for me? Yeah. Well, I think the white screen will be better. So again, thank you all the nations. We're gonna give you a family and need. We really appreciate you guys coming out. I hope you learned something. And again, a lot of what I'm going to tell you is not my opinion, it's fact, it's just from the science that is the, the latest research out there that I study and read. Countries with the highest caloric intake, obviously USA is up there, right? But a funny thing, between USA, Luxembourg, Belgium, Greece, Ireland, only one of these countries is the fattest. And guess which one? We win. We're the winners. Isn't that odd though? How come these next top four are not in the fattest countries? Not even in the top 10, I don't even think in the top 15. They eat the same amount of calories, they were up around the average person, about 3,500 calories a day. 3,500 calories a day on average. So here's the thing, you know, like I said, do other countries move more? Do they eat differently? We're going to talk about that. You know, in America, a lot of people don't eat breakfast, and what do we do? We overeat later. And then it fills your belly at night, so when you wake up, of course you're not hungry, right? Because you have a belly full of food. So we'll talk about that. Uh, size is relative. I'm sure somebody's going to attest to this, just you know, being around. Out to eat, you know, we go to Olive Garden once in a while. You get a bowl of pasta. That is not one serving size. One serving size is a teacup, an actual small little teacup. That's one cup. That's one piece of bread, one cup of rice, one cup of pasta, whatever it is, one cup. How many people actually eat one cup of pasta? Because I know I don't. I'm sure there's some things that do, but I know I don't. Uh, plate sizes. I saw a cool study on different plate sizes. The bigger your plates, the more likely you'll overeat. You know? And look at the plates they give you when you go out to eat. So you just gotta be aware of that stuff. Car holders in, in trucks and cars, you know, they sell big gulps at 7 Eleven that are a, a liter or two liter of soda. You know, think about that. Nobody needs that much soda. You know? uh, seats in theaters and airplanes. Kids' chocolate milk. I took the kids to Dunkin' Donuts the other day, got them chocolate milk. The chocolate milk was like 24 ounces. That's not a kid's chocolate, but it is now, you know. That's what we're doing. We're drinking more, we're eating more, we're moving less. It's crazy. Macronutrient breakdown. Again, this is the general rule of thumb. Uh, 1920, some guy made this up for the military. I kind of agree with it, I kind of don't. It, kind of, it really more so depends on what type of food you're eating and the sizes. But it basically breaks down. 50% carbs, 30% protein, 20% fat. Again, everyone has their own opinion. But bottom line, Every meal you eat in the day, throughout the day, this is the breakdown that is said that is the best for your health. We'll talk about that. America's breakdown. We eat way more carbs and way more bad fats and not enough protein. So basically everyone's stuck on bread, pasta, waffles, bagels, all the doughy stuff.
that's in it, cheese steaks or pizza, high in fat, high in bad carbs, low in protein, very bad. We'll talk about why. I hate eating breakfast. How many people ate breakfast today? Coffee's not breakfast. So about half, right? And most of these train on me, so that sucks, because I tell you to eat breakfast. But if you're being honest, I appreciate it. If you don't eat breakfast, break the word breakfast down. Break the fast. The fast of when? Sleep. So if you sleep for eight hours, which whoever has kids doesn't sleep for eight hours. But you say you sleep five, six, doesn't matter. When you go to bed, and obviously if you're not eating an hour or two before bed, which you shouldn't be, you have not eaten for about ten hours by the time you wake up. You are in a catabolic state, which means you are eating muscle and bone and not and not burning fat like you think you are by not eating. So you have to break the fast. When you wake up in the morning, you have to trigger your metabolism, you have to eat anything. I tell you know, especially my athletes, I'll tell them to eat cold pizza rather than nothing. You know, eat something, not nothing. There's catabolic and anabolic, which we'll go over. Anabolic means you're growing. Catabolic means you're eating yourself. Anabolic state is what we all want. That's why I promote eating before you train and right after you train. Because when you lift weights, what are you doing to your muscle fibers? Breaking them down, you're tearing fibers and they need to be rebuilt. But without nutrients, not calories, they're low, but more so nutrients, they can't be built back up stronger and bigger. Vital. Not hungry in the morning. Again, I said most people eat a late heavy dinner, wake up and they're not hungry so they don't eat, right? Carbohydrates, CHO, every nutritionist here will see CHO. It's just the molecular breakdown. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, that's what carbohydrates are made of. The fuel factor, that just means how many calories per gram. So carbohydrates, every one carbohydrate you eat is four calories. So I put a little math up there, if you eat 10 carbs, you have 40 calories, simple, right? Main fuel source, sugar is our main fuel source. That's what we're built off of. That's why we're breathing right now. Your brain always needs sugar at all times. Main fuel source, they're cheap, they taste good, they have long shelf lives. How many people shop, go food shop and go up and down the aisles, you buy something in a package or box and it has a, an expiration date for 2016? Do you really think that's good for you? What is in that food that makes it stay good on a shelf for 10 years or six years? So, you gotta think about what we're eating. Uh, it tastes good, you know, they put things in heavy carbohydrates. You know, how many people love bread? Most people are addicted to it, right? Some type of bread. Is it the enemy? Of course not. No macronutrient is the enemy. If you do too much of anything, it's bad. I was watching a show on uh, morbidly obese people. They followed like five or six of them in a home where they were trying to drop significant weight. They couldn't figure out why this guy was gaining weight because they fed him like a machine. He had to eat what they told him. They found out he was hiding. He was eating 60 oranges a day. 60. He found the fruit stash and was bringing them in his bed and eating 60 oranges. So even oranges can hurt you, right? It's too much. They're simple carbs and complex carbs. Now, if I, some of you don't know, I'm an instructor at MPTI, I teach this stuff, so I'm not going to get too in depth of what simple and complex carbohydrates are. But, simply, simple carbs, table sugar, white flour, honey, milk, yogurt, candy. The molecular structure is a quick breakdown. What they do do is they, they spike your sugar quickly. These aren't all bad because fruit. Fruit is good, fruit gets a bad rap. Again, if you eat too much, it's bad. Uh, complex carbohydrates, Vegetables, whole grains, whole grain cereal, spinach, beans, broccoli, all the good stuff. The reason you'll always hear people say eat more complex than simple, this will, will make your hormones in your body react differently. If you eat, if you just drink, if you eat that piece of chocolate, instantly it's, it's a simple sugar, it's a simple carb. Your blood sugar spikes quickly and it's going to drop quickly. So I'll have your attention for the next 45 minutes until I'm going to hurry up, unless I give you more chocolate. If you ate, you know, some spinach right now, your blood sugar would slowly increase. And that's good, that's what you want. Protein. Protein's fuel factor is the same as carbohydrates. It's four. There's four calories per gram of protein. Protein is, a, and they have essential amino acids. Protein builds muscle, we need it. And we'll talk about the difference between real, real protein, which is in animal meat, and protein that you buy in a store. Regulates body processes such as water balancing, transporting nutrients, and making muscles contract. It's vital, guys. You have to eat real protein. BCAAs, branch chain amino acids. It's just the building blocks of protein. It's how you build muscle. If you are going to lift weights and, and try to get big, or even just try to be strong, you need to eat protein and real protein. Example, eggs, steak, chicken, beef, fish, cheese. Protein powders, the latest research on protein powders. Some people don't like this. You excrete 70% of 
So you eat it, you drink it, whatever you're doing to it, you pee it out. So you're still getting 30%, so I'm not saying it's bad. If you just don't eat enough meat or chicken or fish in a day, you can supplement with it, but you're peeing a lot of it out. Fat. Now here's where fat got a bad name. Fat's fuel factor is nine calories per gram, so you think, wow, that's more than double carbohydrates and protein. But it's essential. Why is fat essential? Essential to the body. If females don't have enough body fat on them, they stop menstruating. If you stop menstruating, it's a bad thing. So if you don't menstruate because you're too lean, that's dangerous. Men too though, we need it for insulation, protection, fat soluble vitamins, transportation, you need fat. It's not excess, right? It's not excess. Helps you feel fuller quicker. Big thing right there. It's not really what you eat, it's how you eat it, it's how you mix your macronutrients. Remember back to the, the, uh, the big pie chart. You want to eat some carbs, some fat, some protein. If you eat just carbohydrates, you're going to get a good sugar and insulin spike, and then what? Right down, you're hungry again. So now your body craves nutrients. You're giving it, you're giving it calories, you're just not giving it nutrients, so it's hungry again. <coughs> not good. Olive oil, avocado, fatty fish, nuts, peanut butter, eat it all, it's good for you. Hormones, you know, very important, guys, very important. Sugar, food. Sugar spikes glucose levels. Again, you eat that chocolate, your sugar spikes up. But what follows sugar? Insulin. You have to have insulin if you want energy in your cells. So basically, real simple, sugar goes up, insulin follows. It allows glucose entry into the cell. It's how you have energy. If you get too much of that, if you do it too often, you can have insulin resistance. So then your cell thinks, wow, you just keep eating and eating and eating and eating. I'm not taking any more insulin. So guess what? That sugar doesn't go in the cell and give you energy. But guess what the sugar does? It stays in your bloodstream. And now what happens? You have diabetes. Simple as that. <laughs> Mix back the nutrients, like we just said, to avoid quick sugar spikes and insulin spikes. Glucagon. This is important. I'll go to the next slide. Real simple. Take a look at this. When you eat sugar, insulin follows and tries to combat sugar down. Very important. This is, what, this is what goes through on your body all day and night. Glucagon and insulin battle it out to keep, to maintain good sugar. Anyone know a good sugar, blood sugar level? Resting, fasting? 80 to 125. The paramedic. I'll go with 60 to 100, but he's probably smart than me. So you want, to, you want around 100, guys. You're, you're fasting blood sugar. George, you know the new number they gave this year for diabetes, 121 fasting? 100, yeah, 120. 121. So if you're fasting, you do blood work, you're 121 or over, you're pre-diabetic or diabetic. Mm -hmm. But basically, like you said, you eat sugar, insulin has to combat it and make you normal again. Glucagon. Now this is, a, this is an anabolic hormone, which is good and not in excess. Glucagon is a catabolic hormone, so it gets a bad rap again. People think, oh, glucagon's bad, so that means I'm catabolic. It's very good if, I'm a, if I can't find food. Think back to caveman days. Not too long ago, we were hunting food. We had to go find it, get some water, boil it, kill an animal, skin it, eat it, right? If I couldn't find food for my family and I didn't eat, instead of dying, my body did something amazing. It slowed its metabolism down, stored body fat, and glucagon kicked in, started eating fat to give me sugar. That's what happens. So think about that. So when you're sleeping, thank God glucagon works or you would just, you wouldn't wake up. Eat real foods. Moderation is key, never deprivation. I mean, I've been saying this for years. God knows, you know, I'm not perfect with my diet. And I'll show you on the slide in a minute why. But moderation is key. If you do, I mean, some people, I think this is a two-way street. Some people either have to go hardcore or nothing. Most don't, though. Because you think about how many times New Year's is coming up, how many people made resolutions in the past 20 years, kept them for a month, and then what? Never saw them through, right? So that's what happens. It's not moderate moderation. Your food should grow mold or die. I was at a seminar and someone said that. I was like, holy shit, I wrote that down. That's awesome. Your food should grow mold or die. Think about that. Do Trisky crackers grow mold and die? Do donuts? Probably not. You know, everybody sees that, that picture about McDonald's french fries and burger from eight years ago and it looks like you bought it this morning. You know, and then they put like a sweet potato in the other picture from a week ago and it's moldy and black and tape gone. Mold will eat that. Mold and fungus won't even eat McDonald's. <laughs> Think about that. We probably shouldn't either. But again, eat nutrient dense foods, guys. Eat nutrient dense foods. When you get caught in an overeating thing, it's probably because you're eating lots of calories and not enough nutrients. Your body just says, hey, I want more food. But you take it as just eat more, not eat more right. You know, correct. Uh, eat, healthy eating will increase longevity and quality of your life. 
And let's be honest, how many times have we eaten fast food or something crappy and you feel like shit? It happens all the time. It happens all the time. And then when you eat a good meal, you feel good, right? Food is fuel. Food is fuel. I, I remember my dad saying that to me when I was young. He was a military guy, real hardcore. And he eats, you know, proper, he can't talk, and he says, food is fuel. When he's done, he pushes the plate away, he walks away. My dad leans, like 60 years old, he's lean. Drinks a little bit, but he's still lean. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he takes food as fuel, he doesn't care what it tastes like. I think that's a little excessive, but he is right. You know, think about when we eat. Funeral, what do you go do? Parties, what do you go do? Right, you go to a birthday party, you eat crap, 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 cake, crap, crap, right? Everything you do revolves eating. I gave you chocolate at the nutrition center. <laughs> low fat, no fat. Bullshit. If it says low fat or no fat, what did they replace the fat they took out with? Or just man-made chemicals that you can't pronounce, right? Probably worse for you, eat real food. Fillers, preservatives, man-made chemicals. Overweight people buy low fat, no fat products. If you don't think this is a, uh, a way to make money and billions of dollars for these industries, you're sadly mistaken and you're very naive. These are businesses, guys. They don't care about your health. Heavy people and unhealthy people make money for the for the for insurance companies. They don't make money off healthy people. So don't forget that. Can you pronounce the ingredients listed in your food? Most of us can't, you know. Always that's another thing. People always look at me like, oh, look at you know, read this label. Immediately I go to the ingredient list, not the calorie list. You know what I'm saying? The ingredient list. That is always tapered from what's in it most. Whatever you read first on the ingredient list is what is the most it has, and then it tapers down to what, what the little has in it. Always remember that. Read the ingredient list. Prepare, preparation. Failure to prepare is preparing to fail. It's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. You know, there's, I'm looking around, and 20 people said they would be here, and they're probably not here. They probably didn't prepare last night, did they? They probably went out drinking, were hung over, didn't feel like waking up, whatever the reason. But if you don't prepare, you prepare to fail. Whether you're training, whether you're working, whatever you're doing, preparation is key. Spend Sundays food shopping and prepping meals and meal plans for the week. You know, how many, I, I, I'm sorry, your question? How many people say they don't have time to cook, they don't have time to food shop? That's bullshit. We have time for movies, we have time for Facebook, we have time for all that crap, we have time to food shop. You should have to restock your fridge every week. That goes back, think about that. That goes, when I, I remember growing up, I lived off frozen fish sticks, grilled cheese, macaroni and cheese, pasta, seriously, like probably half these, right? The food we, I ate for the most part was never fresh, ever. You know, we, we could stock our fridge our, in our, um, our freezer and our cabinets, and for months you could eat that food, you know? Not a good thing though. If you have to restock your fridge, that means you're buying fresh. Because what's going to happen to lettuce and tomatoes and cucumbers in a week? You know, they're going to go bad if you don't eat them, so you should have to restock. Shop the perimeter. This is another good one. I never realized that. How many people go food shopping up and down the aisles is what? All boxes. All boxes that we talk about. All the ingredients. Stay on the perimeter. Think about all your, think in your head right now when you go food shopping. What's on the perimeter? Fruit, vegetables, fish, chicken, all the good stuff, right? Shop the perimeter as much as possible. Keep a food journal. This takes the guessing out. We went, I went to a high school. I did a no, middle school, a couple years ago, I did a nutrition seminar similar to this. I asked every little kid to write down how many calories they thought was in a slice of pizza. I knew they wouldn't know that there were eight. But I wanted to see what they thought, you know? They're eight, they didn't know they know stuff. I got a thousand calories, I got two calories, I got five thousand calories. They had no clue. They had no idea even calories were fuel. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. And I understand that, but you know what? I did it with adults recently too, and adults don't know either. Most people don't know how many calories they're actually eating. We'll break this down. What should I eat? I, I learned how to do PowerPoint the past two weeks and I saw the like, pictures. Sorry, sorry about that. What should I eat? Eggs. Yes, eat the yolk. Yes, eat the yolk. And I have lots of studies to back what I'm saying. Eat the yolk. What's in the yolk that, we, that we're afraid of? Cholesterol. cholesterol. There has never been one study that shows dietary cholesterol is affected by egg cholesterol. Ever. Ever. If you're a heavy, hard, obese person and you're diabetic and you eat heavy carbs with cholesterol, high foods, that's different. But eating eggs with the yolk is good for you. It has the essential proteins in it, it has the essential fats in it, it has all the nutrients in the yolk. The egg whites are strictly protein, so eat the yolks. Lean meats. Actually, I've been testing that theory. My cholesterol is 180, which is amazing. I eat 12 eggs a day usually, almost sometimes more. 
lean meats, fish, chicken, fruits, vegetables. All this stuff will go bad if I leave it out, for the most part. Whole grain rice and bread and sweet potatoes, of course, you're going to get some. You have to. I mean, other countries, you know, we're doing studies on uh, Brazilians, like my girlfriend. Every meal, she eats rice. Every single meal, look at it. Look at her whole family. They're all lean. Most Brazilians. My stepdaughter, 13, went to Brazil this summer, came back, she said she didn't see one fat person. And they eat rice every day. But they don't eat a lot of it. They literally, and they eat differently. Big breakfast, medium lunch, very small dinner. Um, nuts and seeds, colorful foods. Pizza every Friday, I threw that in there for you guys. You know, these pizza. <laughs> but colorful foods, think about it. All the bad foods you eat are beige and are colorless. You know? Think about it. Eating out. Fast food shortens your life. Absolutely true. It's a guessing game. You don't know what's in your food. And again, we talked about businesses need to turn a profit. If I can figure out a chemical that's going to make you addicted to me or no bull training, and I can give it to you and you're going to keep coming back, I'm going to be a successful millionaire, right? I haven't found that chemical, but McDonald's and Wendy's and all that have. They have stuff in their food that makes you crave it, and you want more of it. So you got to be careful. Uh, the latest thing I read was about 2,000 different chemicals suck you in and make you addicted. 2,000 different man-made chemicals that we, you know, we can't pronounce. Break the addiction cold turkey. It's important. It's hard to, if you want to lose weight, you know, because you'll drop carbs for a couple of days, and then boom, you'll go out to eat. Boom, you'll go out to eat, and then you just fall back into that carb addiction. Gotta be careful. Water intake. Now this, there's a lot of disputing and debating here. Drinking water flushes your system, we know that. It helps you with your digestive system, we know that. It increases muscle function, absolutely. Assists nut nutrient transport, 100%. Keeps your skin clear, increases synovial fluid. Anybody know what synovial fluid is? Helps your joints, WD-40 I call it in the joints, synovial fluid. If you're dehydrated, you have headaches, your back hurts, your joints hurt, you're probably dehydrated. That's how I answer most of my clients, but I drink more water. I drink a ton of water. I hear that, I drink a ton of water. How much water do you drink? I don't know. How do you know you drink a ton of water? Isn't that relative? Should me and Marinelle drink the same amount of water? I'm double her body weight. Saves your money, right? Diet soda, we'll talk about that, how much money people spend on soda. Again, decreases headaches and joint pain. You gotta drink your water. How much? Different opinions. I usually have a good rule of thumb. I tell people half their body weight ounces. That's a lot of water. If you don't drink water, I'm not gonna tell you, you're a hundred and, you know, a hundred pound person and you, you need to drink 50 ounces of water, that's a lot of water. And coffee, beer, none of that, none of that counts. The pure water, a lot of water. Eight, eight ounces, maybe, lots of beer, none, water makes you weak. Everybody has a different opinion. But I think if I had to say what I really believe, half your body weight ounces. Water's gonna stop you from overeating too. A lot of times, you have, it triggers in your brain when you're dehydrated, you eat, right? Which makes sense, because there's a lot of water in your food, depending on what you eat, but you should drink water. Diets make you fat. How many people have been on diets before? On all of us, right? Pretty much. Yoga and dieting leads to fluctuations in your metabolism. Absolutely. Diets will, in the end, want to make you fat in the end. No doubt about it. It's short-term success. Yes, you'll go balls to the wall, you'll lose 30 pounds, and guess what happens when you stop eating well? You're going to go back up. So you didn't really teach yourself anything. You didn't learn. You didn't change your lifestyle. There's something called a set point theory. A set point theory. So if, if I weigh right now 256, if I maintain this weight for more than about a month, and that may vary depending on the result, maybe two months, that's where my body wants to stay. So my body's going to do everything it can, so now it's going to be hard for me to gain weight and hard for me to lose weight. So everybody here is probably at their set point theory, pretty close. If you're not in the middle of a drastic increase in caloric intake or decrease. So your, set, your body's doing everything it can to stay at homeostasis right now. So that's why it's hard to lose weight, that's why for big, big lifters it's hard to put on weight. So, Atkins, South Beach, soup diet, cabbage diet, paleo diet, etc. We know from years of, of, of research, less carbohydrates, and I mean the, the man-made stuff, is the best way to go. Simple as that. All the stuff we love, gotta, gotta get rid of it or just cut it back a lot. It's the best way to lose weight. But the real answer is create a caloric deficit, shrink your stomach. Bottom line, I, you know, I talk to people all the time, students, clients, whoever, potential clients, you know, I'm, I'm 280, I can't seem to lose weight, I only eat about 1,200 calories a day. Yeah, right. Bullshit. You cannot be 300 pounds and eat 1,300 calories a day. I don't care if you sit on the couch all day. Your body, just to, to breathe and function, will burn more than that. 
So you are eating too many calories if you're too heavy. That's the bottom line. You might not know it, you might not want to acknowledge it, you might not want to be real, but it's the truth. You eat too much and you move too little. Okay? Calories in versus calories out, I like this a lot. Are all calories created equal? Of course not. So this is where it comes back to that first slide, the five countries with the highest caloric intake. 300 calories of french fries obviously is not the same as 300 calories of sweet potatoes, right? Because what's the difference? French fries are deep fried, all the nutrients ripped out of it, crap put it in, sweet potatoes natural, from the earth, comes out of the ground. Eat it, all the nutrients are there. Still the same amount of calories though, but it's going to change what happens hormonally in your body. Okay, so it's, it's important to make good choices. Nutrient dense, calorically dense. Always remember that when you're about to eat something, is this nutrient dense? Am I just getting it two calories, be hungry in an hour, be moody, feel like crap, look in the mirror and you know, have low self-esteem and walk around the place. Right? Chain reaction. Hormones change from food. You don't have to worry about that. But basically, your hormones can dictate your mood. I really gave these chocolates, so I have these paying attention. So I have these like alert, creates awareness. That's what it does. It makes you, you know, it's an antidepressant, believe it or not. Like I said, eat 45 pounds of it, you'll be stoned. So that would be fun. So again, I always ask my clients, do you want to lose weight or do you want to lose fat? If you want to lose weight, I'll just tell you not to eat and sit home. Don't eat, you'll lose, you'll lose a lot of weight. But then you're going to shrink and you're going to get frail. And women, be careful, you're going to get osteoporosis, your bones will shrink, you'll be real frail, you'll be weak, you'll look emaciated. And then what happens when you start eating, you've slowed your metabolism to a halt because you have no muscle mass, no bone density, you're dehydrated, you feel and look like shit. And now when you start eating, guess what you're going to pack on? No muscle. So it's important. I mean, I got girls that weigh, I got, I can point out two different females numerous times. One weighs 140, the other one weighs 140. One looks amazing, the other one looks soft. Right? Depends on the body composition. It's not about weight. One drink a day. This damn thing wouldn't let me put a soda here. I couldn't figure it out. So I was pissed. So I wanted to call one soda a day. I shouldn't tell you my mistakes, but it's true. Soda, iced tea, milk, coffee. Listen, you're not going to just live off water. I get it. Just be careful and this will make you pay attention. There's 3,500 calories in one pound of fat, give or take a bucket. But it's true. So there's 100 cal 150 calories in that can of Coke, because that's just a can of Coke. You forget that. <laughs> one soda a day for a year will give you 54,750 calories. I had to use a calculator, not this one. That'll give you 55,000 calories extra in a year. In that year, you'll gain 15 and a half pounds from one extra soda. So now take that on the other way. What if you drink three sodas a day now and go to two? You'll be down almost 16 pounds in a year. It's pretty darn good. You know, imagine you cut out your two soda addiction now. And yes, people right now put a thing, well, I don't die, I'm good. <laughs> Guess what diet soda does to you? It leaches calcium. It leaches calcium out of your bones. It sucks calcium out of your bones. Put soda on the hood of a car. Guess what happens in about two days? It eats the pain. Eats the paint. Try it if you're stupid enough. It <laughs> eats the paint. So we'll try it on George's way. It eats the paint, so you gotta be careful. It leaches calcium and it sends triggers to your brain to tell you to eat, that you're never full. So get away from diet soda. How many people know or drink diet soda? You know someone. Liars. Okay? They're addicted to it. You can't drink one diet soda in a day, you know damn well I'm right. Okay? <coughs> Coffee, good or bad? Do what I say, not what I do. Uh, if it has aspartame in certain chemicals, okay. you gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. I gotta be honest. I'd almost rather drink a real soda if you need soda. Because you think, by the way, you can have the calories, so I'm good. But really, what are you doing in your body? All right, coffee, good or bad? It's pretty cool. Caffeine is a proven fat burner. It's a proven fat burner. It's great for you. Athletes competing in the Olympics are tested right before the competition for high levels of caffeine. If the levels of high caffeine they find are too high, they can't compete. They, they consider it cheating. Think about that. So it works. How many people had coffee this morning? 90 percent Too much will burn out your adrenal gland. As you get older, what happens? I started drinking coffee when I was 24. Biggest mistake in my life. I wish I never had one. But now I need it. I'm addicted to it. I always need, I needed 12 ounces a day. Uh, six years in, guess how much I need now? Double that. In six, four years, I'm going to need 48 ounces. And I used to watch my mom drink 
pot after pot after pot. I'm like, how the hell do you need all that coffee? And then I looked it up. She has no adrenal gland left. She gets no adrenaline rush. She can't get that excitement from without coffee. So she has to drink lots of coffee. Sucks. Too much will burn out the adrenaline gland. It's addicting again. Coffee sciences differ around the world. Anybody ever been in Europe? You ever, you ever see a coffee? I know dark, you know well. What's the size of their coffees and lattes over there? No, no. Little baby. That's it. That's all you need. See, let's go. Continue our day. This is a medium. That's like 24 ounces of coffee. That's crazy. That's a medium. Extra, extra cream, extra, extra sugar. So again, it depends what you put it in. But coffee in itself is a bean and it's natural and it's good for you. Humans are built to move. Kids run, unfortunately, and parents yell, what? Oh, Slow on. down. Let your kids run, man. My kids lift the weights right now. I'm not going to yell. <laughs> like, seriously, if he hits his head and gets cut, he, can, he, he, he hits his head and gets cut. That's a kid, you know? No, Leo, exactly. It's got to be, you know. But well, why? You know, why do we, why we stop in movement? We're nervous. We're scared. We have PS3s, Xbox, Wii's, TVs, computers. My stepdaughter and I, you know, when I started living with, you know, we moved in together. Game console, she had, a, she had a Wii, she had a PlayStation, she had all of these. Guess how many times she plays them? Never. Uh, Never one time. We have, our kids have so much, and yet do so little, you know? Drive through most neighborhoods, what do you see? I know my neighborhood, I was almost getting hit by cars all the time when I was a kid. Playing street football, hockey, basketball, everything. You don't see that anymore. Drive through almost any neighborhood, that's where you live. But most neighborhoods, kids are not outside playing. That sucks. Schools cut out recess and gym time. That's absurd. Again, I'll print out any study you want that I've been reading about it. Studies prove time and time again that the more movement you get, the more the brain is stimulated. That's an awesome thing, man. Active kids get higher test scores. Bottom line. The more active your child is, the better they're going to do in school. Me and George, Betty. Sorry, George, how to do it to you. That's me on the left six years ago. At my birthday. Yep. I tried to train and out train my poor diet. I swear to God, that's me. Really? That's, it. that's me on the left. George smacked cake in my face on my birthday. I'm thin. <laughs> <laughs> you all know George Bennett. He's down almost 100 pounds. Me and George were strong here. Me and George were deadlifted three plus. We were benching almost three, maybe more actually. We, we thought bench press we should do four times a week. That's why we had bad shoulders. But we were strong here. We were bouncers here. We used to kick some ass every weekend. But we didn't eat right. Eat a lot. We kept set. We would, we would train our asses off and then go get a pizza and a cheesesteak. Both. We just thought that we're training. We're good. But I was 335 here. He was 325. I don't know. So think about that. We tried to out train a poor diet and we couldn't. And neither can you. So you can train hard all you want, but if you eat like shit, you're going to look like shit. Burn that in your memory. <laughs> that was hard to put that on my slide. I can't remember. Right? I put that up on my fall. Uh, well, I work out. That's what I used to say. That's what a lot of you say. You, know, you work out hard, you think, I deserve this. You, know, you reward yourself like you're a fucking animal. You know? you're not. One hour of cardio, we all know I don't really like cardio, but two to 800 calories, it would vary greatly. That's why I had to put such a big number. But say you burn 800 calories in an hour. So you train hard, you feel good. Three Oreo cookies, that's one serving size. Three Oreo cookies. That's funny. Who the hell eats three Oreo cookies? Because I know I don't. I'm sure you told me. Nobody eats three, okay? I get like, as much as my hand can fit. And then you sit down and you do a big cookie. I'm telling you I'm lying. One slice of pizza actually does have about 250 calories. That's a bad, okay? Then you cost blah, blah, blah. Whatever. But you have one. But think about that. So you might bust your ass in the gym for an hour. And how many people honestly eat one slice of pizza? Besides me. Nobody, right? I don't. I'll put a whole pizza down easily. So do the math. Eight times 250, right? McDonald's number one. What's that? Big Mac frying Coke, right? Like double what you want, but you know what it is? 1,300 calories. That's all the females in here. That's your caloric intake for the day. If you ate a number one. Think about that. You have a sandwich, fry, and coke. That's your whole caloric intake for the entire day. Unreal. So that doesn't count the other three meals you might eat, or snacks, or drinks, or coffees, right? 
You gotta be careful. A lot of people drink their calories. They don't realize it. So you gotta, you gotta really watch out, guys. I'm proud of this. I figured out how to make these little triangles and make four and a five of them. Real quick, the epoch effect. This is crucial. This is why I opened the gym and tried to learn this. Excess post energy oxygen consumption. I have some of my MPTI students here, so I always remember this. An epoch or afterburn effect. And this is just science, guys. Opinion doesn't matter here. Resistance training. When you weight train, so say, I give this example to some of you, probably most of you haven't heard this. Say me and, me and Joe, big Joe here, he's an MBTI student. Me and Joe train for an hour right now. Say I weight train, say I do a full hardcore body, you know, what we do here, deadlift, pull, push, half. And Joe runs for an hour. I know Joe can run for an hour, but just say he can, who cares. In that hour, I might only burn three, four, five hundred calories, depending on how many breaks I take. Joe will burn at least a thousand. If he runs on a treadmill for an hour straight at a good pace, will burn double what I burn. So that's right there, that little bit of information people took it and ran with and thought, oh, you got cardio. You got long, slow distance cardio. What they forgot to tell you was, I, lifting weights, was going to get an epic effect. He was not going to get it. Meaning, my resistance training made me injury proof because I'm strong and I have more muscle mass, right? I was never going to hurt. I was never going to hurt. Strong people don't get hurt. Muscles. I build muscle and bone or any other weight trains. Bone. We put bone on. Bone grows by one thing, resistance. So me standing here, I have resistance on my hips. So I'm growing bone. I get the afterburn effect, which really is just I jumpstart my metabolism. That's basically what it is. My metabolism is higher. Resistance training, all these good things happen. My metabolism is higher. I'm going to burn more calories. But I do have to eat more now. But I want to eat the right stuff. Say you do cardio every day, long, slow distance, and I'm not saying never, because I know runners love to run, and I get it. But I don't know any runners that aren't injured. None. I don't know one. Cardio, not LSD like you're thing. Long, slow distance. Joint breakdown. Ankles, knees, back, neck. All stupid injuries because joint compression is 10,000 a day. You start to lose bone and muscle. Now, this is funny. When you, what do most long, slow distance runners do? Amen. Amen. What do most long, slow distance runners look like? Most. Look at the top 10 marathon winners this year. They look at anorexic, right? Would you want to look like that? Is that for you? They're, they're small and skinny, and why is that? They run a lot, so think of evolution and adaptation. Why are they so frail and skinny? The more they run, the more their body thought, shit, this extra bone and muscle is slowing me down. So I'm going to decrease bone and muscle, and I'm going to go faster. I'm going to run longer. And it's making them worse. It makes them great runners, don't get me wrong. But it makes them bad for all this stuff. Joint breakdown, bone and muscle loss. It slows their metabolism. It slows their metabolism. So I'm not saying never do long slow distance. I get it, it's a mind thing. You get out and just feel good, you feel free. But all my runners need to weight train. So if you do keep continue to run, you have to weight train. Because remember, you know, I get runners in their own time with joint pain, they can't figure it out, doctors don't know what's wrong. You take one look at them, if you know anything about anatomy, your ankle doesn't move well, so your knee does. Quick breakdown of the joints, keep it simple. Every joint alternates what its job is. Simple as that. Your ankle should be mobile, it should be very mobile. Your knees should be stable. Your hips mobile, your lumbar spine stable, thoracic spine mobile, and so on and so on. Shoulders should change up depending on which joint. Think about that. But if my ankle's locked up because it hurts and I, I'm avoiding running on it, but I'll continue to run even though it hurts, which is stupid, just like I used to deadlift with a bad back and I got hurt. If my ankle doesn't move as well as it should, guess what happens to the joint? Instead of being stable, what's it start to do? Instead of stability, it increases mobility. So the stable knee joint increases its movement to help the tight ankle. Same thing with lower back pain. 90% of people with lower back, guess what their hips are? Instead of being mobile, they're tight. They're stable, stable joints, which is bad. So every, anytime someone tells me, oh, my knee hurts, I'm not looking at their knee. It's not, the, it's not why their knee hurts unless I kicked you in it. Unless it's an acute injury. It's chronic. Your knee hurts because your hip or ankle is not doing something it should. Simple as that. So that's why the running thing for me, I don't like. I don't want people hurt. I don't want people coming out and my knee hurts. My back hurts. You know? Alright. Q&A, guys. I'm sure some of you have questions. We'll kind of go over real quick. Does anyone have any questions on what we went over today? Yes. Why is fruit simple? 
Uh, the molecular structure, it's, it's just going to spike your sugar and insulin quickly. It breaks down fast. Simple as that. And again, fruit is not bad for you guys, trust me. Like I said, eat 60 oranges in a day. Yeah, that's going to be bad for you. Don't eat 60. Yes? We talked about oh, it. Can we get my name Hi. <laughs> we talked about the whole five hour energy thing. I don't drink coffee. Five hour energy? Yeah. Yeah, guys, real quick, Kimmy Kim, most of you know her. She asked me about five hour energies. Now, I don't personally drink them. I know people, lots of people that do. They're a billion dollar corporation. I'm sure somebody's had them this morning. They just found, they cited 33 deaths because of five hour energies. Granted, it was probably underlying factors that contributed to it, not just because of the five hour energy. But again, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of it. Again, if it's just caffeine, maybe, but what else are they putting in it? Successful, but number one, they're passionate. 
Successful people are passionate. They love what they do. So whatever you do, if you're passionate about it, you'll be successful. Whether you can you know, have a million dollars or not, you will love what you do and you'll be passionate. But look closely at anybody you look up to. They probably work harder than you. They're not lucky. I don't even believe in luck. Luck is when you know hard work meets opportunity. That's luck. You didn't get lucky because you lost 50 pounds and you look great. You trained your ass off and you ate better. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, my buddy uh, isn't going to be a doctor because he's lucky. He works harder than everybody else. He goes to Starbucks at 6 a.m., 5 a.m., whenever they open, goes to school, teaches, goes back to Starbucks, and does it all day. He, work, he outworks everybody. That's why he's going to be a doctor. You know? That's why some users are successful. You should probably outwork everybody else. Trainers. I teach 50-something you know, trainers a week. So there's some good trainers. There's other trainers. You know, first time a trainer comes in, he's like, oh, what's money you make? Get out. It, you don't. You don't understand. You don't. You're not passionate. You don't want to help people. You want to make money. You know. Go do something else. It's the same for you. Anything. Anything you do. You have. You know. Money. Have, you know, once the passion's there, the money will follow. The bottom line. And you, you guys, have these trainers, you know. I actually give a shit if you move better. I want you to move well. Yes, I piss these off sometimes. But no, I don't do this. Shouldn't do that. Yes, they boot camp, leg flings. I yelled it three times, don't throw sideways, it's bad for your back. You know how I know it's bad for your back? Because I spent a month reading one of the hardest books I've ever read. I needed a dictionary to read this book. I'm serious. But I found out that throwing your legs sideways is going to give you a bad back. So yeah, I might be a dick and say, hey, stop doing that, you're going to hurt yourself. And you might take it the wrong way, but I'm helping you. I'm trying to just look out for your best interest because I know you didn't read that book. You know? Just like uh, when I need my taxes done. I called up Tony, called up one of my RS guys. They know that stuff, they're passionate about this stuff. I don't. So we all have our different things, you know? Any questions? I am not a dairy fan. And I know, and I gotta be honest, I'm still up in the air with this. I, you know, I talk to some smart people that are with me, and then I talk to some smart people that are, think I'm crazy. Who needs milk and dairy? Who really needs it? Babies. And what do they do when you give it to them? What did my, my son was born at five pounds, he weighs 30 now. They double their body weight. They keep doubling their body weight. I drink milk right now. I drink water. But good boy. <laughs> so we do give up milk, honestly. But I'm not a big dairy fan. And I, I know this. Growing up, when we saw that last picture, which we'll never see again, I drank lots of milk. And I drank lots of soda, too, and anything shit. But I used to drink a gallon a day as a kid. I could put down a gallon. My mom used to smack me all the time. Stop drinking milk. Milk. But I loved it because it was sugar. It's a simple, it's free, it's you know, it's lactose. It's sugar. So you crave sugar. I was thirsty probably, and I thought, oh no. You know, I know lots of heavy people are addicted to milk, so frozen yogurt, I would limit. Again, moderation, not deprivation. I'm still up in the air, but I would say stay away from dairy if you're trying to cut substantial weight off. Green yogurt is definitely better because the fat content, protein content is much higher, I think double. So that could be better because now you're mixing macronutrients. But again, it still could be dairy. I could still not like that. But I'm telling you now, I'm not fully on either side. I'll be honest. Any other questions? Yeah, I eat uh, five egg, egg whites in one meal. What do you think about that? I think you should eat six eggs. <laughs> Your cholesterol's good. I think you should eat the whole way. You think I should eat the yolk? Yeah, I do. Yeah, what kind of eggs do you buy? At, uh, the free range, the ones that can run around and have some like hard shells, hard chickens. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, they sell this one. They sell brown, right? Brown. They're more expensive, but to be honest, like, are you really spending money? I had another person tell me, oh, I eat healthy, it's just too expensive. Bullshit. Because your insurance, anybody go get a physical, and if you're overweight, guess what your premiums have? Guess what happens to your premium? You're paying more for your health than being unhealthy. So if you can spend a little more money and eat better choices, better food, you're going to be healthy, you don't have to go to the doctor and do things, you don't have to be able to eat medicines, you know? You can change that. The earth provides what you need. It really does. If you live off the earth as best you can, you will be healthy. If you move like you should, you will be healthy. Just think, a thousand, a hundred, shit, a hundred years ago, our work weeks, people tell me, oh, I'm so stressed out, they work, oh, I'm working like 45 hours a week. And in my head, I'm like, 45? I wish I could put in 40 hours a week, you know? We used to work 60 plus. Our average work day was 60 plus hours of manual labor for, for most people. Now we've cut that, you know, almost in half, and we're still too stressed, you know? It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. 
Thanks again, guys. I appreciate it.